This is a 1985 Honda XR600. I'm going to show you how to adjust the intake and exhaust valves. The first thing you want to do is uh, uh, remove the seat and the gas tank, which I did in the previous video about the fuel petcock. Um, next thing you want to do is uh, clean clean around the the uh, valve adjustment covers. Just get just try and clean it up so you don't get dirt in the engine. Um, take an air con air compressor. Uh, compressed air and blow in, in, in here near the spark plug because you're going to want to remove the spark plug and you don't want any debris falling into the cylinder. Um, I've already loosened these up to speed up the speed up the video. And you want to remove the, that's the intake. There's the exhaust. Lost the O-ring came out there. And come around to the other side. Got two on this side. It's a single cylinder, but it's got two intake valves and two exhaust valves. And I've already loosened up the spark plug. You just want to get that out. Just need to rotate the engine and find top dead center on the compression stroke. There we go. Take that out, spark plug. Um, after you get that done, you want to remove these these covers here. Um, this will allow you by removing these cover covers. It will allow you to rotate the crankshaft. Um, so you can get the get the engine on top dead center on the compression stroke, but I'm gonna go grab a light so we can so you can see what I'm doing. And I'll be right back. Once you get these covers off, you want to rotate the there's a nut here and you wanna you want or a, a bolt and you wanna rotate it's attached to your crankshaft. You wanna rotate it counterclockwise and then and rotate it until there's a little T mark. There's a mark and it's got a T next to it and it's it's inscribed on the uh, rotor slash flywheel. And then there's a little notch etched into the top of this hole um, on the crankcase and you want that T, T mark to line up with that notch. Once you do that, it tells you that your, your piston's at top dead center, but you want the piston to be at top dead center on the compression stroke. Um, to tell if it's on the compression stroke, there should be looseness in, in all these uh, rockers. And it's very subtle, but you know if you, if you wiggle them carefully, you can tell that they're loose. And once you, if they're all loose, check all four of them. If they're all loose, then you're at top dead center on the compression stroke. Um, that's where you want to be to adjust the valves. After you do that, you want to make sure that this, uh, this is a compression release, starter compression release. It makes it easier to start the bike. You want you want to make sure there's free, free play. Um, if there's not, that means that this this compression release is pressing down on the exhaust valve and it's going to throw off your um, your uh, adjustment. Um, you can see if you look at the exhaust valve right there. I don't want to get too close because it will go out of focus. Um, you can see that this compression release presses down on the exhaust valve. And that's how it uh, lowers the compression, so when you kick the bike over, it's easier to start. But anyway, you want to make sure that there's free play, which there is, so um, we're ready to adjust the valves. The valves on this bike, the uh, intake valve should be adjusted to four thousandths of an inch, and the exhaust valves are five thousandths of an inch. What you want to do is, uh, this is the intake valve um, rocker arm, and you want, you want to get a four, four thousandths of an inch feeler gauge. And... Uh, this, this screw right here is your adjustment screw, and this, this nut right here is your lock nut for this adjustment screw. Um, at the other end of this adjustment screw is where you want your feeler gauge to go to check the clearance. And you want to insert your feeler gauge, and uh, there should just be a slight pull, which there is on this bike. But um, just to show you how to do it, I'm going to go ahead and, and re re readjust this one. So you, you take your wrench, and you want to... Loosen up this lock nut. That 
Take your feeler gauge, slip it back in there. Take your screwdriver, make sure there's you back off the lock nut enough so you, you have free play on this adjustment screw. Um, adjust the adjustment screw in so you get a slight pull on the on the feeler gauge. Just right there. Then you can hold the the adjustment screw and tighten up this lock nut. And you want to tighten down these these this this lock nut to 17 foot pounds, and then recheck the recheck the clearance, which it's right on. And then go through and do that to each uh, each rocker arm, each valve. On this bike, there's four of them. You want to do the same thing with the exhaust valve, only this time you want to use a five thousandths uh, of an inch feeler gauge. Exhaust valve is a little bit harder to get to. It's, it's a little at an angle. Um, like I said, you just want a slight drag on the on the feeler gauge, and that's what I get here. Here's the other exhaust valve on the left side. Um, once again, I'm checking it with five thousandths inch feeler gauge. These are really difficult to get a feel on because they're angled at a weird angle. Um, it's a little bit loose. I'm going to go ahead and adjust this one. Let me get a let me use a ratchet this time. Uh, back off the lock nut so you have plenty of room to play with that um, adjustment screw. That's perfect. Then take your take your torque wrench. It should be uh, tightened to 17 foot pounds. Recheck your adjustment. Well, that tightened up on me a lot. That's good. You it, you really got to be careful when you tighten these up, especially when you hit the, hit it with a torque wrench, and you, there's no way to hold this um, adjustment screw. So you just got to kind of kind of gauge it. Um, you know, you know, get a feel for how much it's going to turn when you when you tighten it with a torque wrench. But um, you know, a few tries and you can get it right. Um, after you get all the valves adjusted, you can uh, reinstall your caps. I couldn't find any torque specs on these caps, so. Um, just don't go haywire on them. Um, check the O-rings, make sure they're not cracked and they're still um, flexible. And uh, go ahead and reinstall all those and 
uh, reinstall your your caps on the on the crankcase here. They also have have O-rings on them. Um, you want to make sure that they're flexible and and uh, not cracked, so they don't leak. And then when you when you start your bike up after you finish, um, just check for leaks around those caps and make sure that there's no leaks. And that's pretty much it. Um, anyway, I hope you found this video helpful, and thank you for watching.